Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars. I'm Dan, and today we're gonna be looking at the KLD B-Flex 25, which is a DIY based tube amp that is loosely based off of the Ampeg Portaflex series. Now the Ampeg Portaflex will set you back about seven or eight hundred dollars, but this guy, although just a little bit different, will only set you back about two hundred and fifty-five dollars. So let's have a closer look and see if it's worth it. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars. Let's get started. Now I'm building my enclosure just out of this one by 10 common pine board that I got from Home Depot for about 15 bucks. So right off the bat, you kind of know that this isn't really a true clone of the Ampeg Portaflex. One, it's 25 watts instead of 20 watts. And two, if you look at the front, you'll see that we have gain, bass, a boost switch, which is actually a treble boost switch, and treble. And then we also have what they call passive and active inputs, but the active input it's really kind of more like a lead channel. It boosts your gain a little bit and kind of cuts the bass out a little bit. So it's really not active and passive. You can tell that they really just repurposed uh, their guitar amp design for bass and they just renamed this active and passive, but it's really not active and passive. You also notice that this chassis has a bunch of extra holes in it. And if I peel off this PVC sticker that's on there, you'd see that there's a few extra holes and that's because KLD has their universal chassis that they use for all their amp kits. So, you know, out of the box, this thing is definitely not sleek and streamlined like the Ampeg Portaflex. Now, if you take a look at the back, you'll notice a couple other things that differ from the Ampeg. One being that it has separate inputs for your 4, 8, and 16 ohm, as opposed to the Portaflex just having one output that I believe auto adjusts for all those. It does have a DI out, same as the Ampeg, but one thing that it does not have is load protection, okay? This amp, while it's turned on, needs to be plugged into a speaker or be under a load, or else you will ruin the output transformer. Now the Ampeg, I believe, already has built-in load protection, meaning that if you were to unplug your speaker while the amp was on, it wouldn't mess up your output transformer at all. Now this is not something that's unique to the KLD B-Flex. In fact, all of KLD's DIY amps require you to have a load on it or else you will ruin the output transformer. All right, I got this black decorative sheet metal thing from Home Depot. There was no price on it, so I took it up to the register. And it was twenty dollars. I don't think I would have paid twenty dollars for it, except for I already took it to the register and I was kind of attached to it by then. But I'm not entirely sure how to cut it. I'm just gonna try some tin snips first and see how that works. Unlike my other KLD amp kit reviews, you're not gonna see me wiring this thing together, and that's because it actually comes pretty much as pictured. Okay, this is not really a do-it-yourself amp kit. It's what they call an assembled amp kit. So it actually comes pre-assembled. Well, that works surprisingly well. How's it fit? I think it'll do. Now, why on earth they only offer this pre-assembled is beyond me. I was honestly very much looking forward to trying to put together my own hand-wired amp. I've only ever done printed circuit board amps up until this point. Now, at first I was pretty annoyed by that, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I think the funnest part about building a DIY tube amp, other than getting a really high-end amp for a lot less money, is building the custom enclosure and having something that's different than what everybody else has. For me, this wiring stuff is just really tedious and honestly, really stressful because if you get it wrong, not only are there deadly voltages in here, um, but also you potentially can ruin the whole thing and have to start over again. You know, it's not like building a guitar where if you mess up a part, you just replace that part and keep moving. And so since my knowledge of building amplifiers is fairly limited at the moment, I'm actually pretty excited that this thing came as an assembled kit so that I can just make a custom enclosure for it. And I've got some really cool ideas. So I'm gonna go ahead and get busy making it my own. There we go. I have found the best way to drill a hole in this stuff is to actually use a Forstner bit and just go really slow. Now, one thing that I am super excited to add to this to make it sort of my own are these VU meters. Now, it's gonna make it hopefully look a little bit like a higher end Ashdown, which I always thought looked so cool. And honestly, Ashdown sounds so cool too. Really cool amps. Anyway, I got this VU meter kit that came with the, I think it's called an op amp board for like $25 on Amazon. And it works surprisingly well. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and wire up one to be on the input and I'm not even gonna bother with the active input. I would never use that as a bass player um, because it's, like I mentioned earlier, it's not really an active input. So I'm gonna wire up one on the passive input which will be calibrated to read my line level uh, so I know what my signal looks like going in. And this other one, I'm going to wire up on the output so I know what my output gain looks like. Now I already tried playing around where to wire this thing into the signal chain. And I think the DI output is the best spot because it already has some resistance on it and it won't affect the output resistance of my speakers. So I won't see any you know, signal drop or anything like that. And it does give a good solid reading. I didn't even need to calibrate it. And right when it started to break up into distortion is right when the needle hit the red. So that's about perfect. Are these things gonna be incredibly accurate? Probably not. Are they there mostly for looks? Probably, but they're still cool. And for $25, I think it adds a ton of value to this kit. I was really happy with the results of this truck bed coating spray that I used on my last base cab. So I'm gonna be using it again on my amp head. And I let you guys convince me with my leftover materials, I should build another base cab. So I can spray them both at the same time. Well, this sweet little mini stack is finally done and it just sounds killer. I absolutely love it, if you can't tell. Um, as you can see, I did make an additional speaker for my stack. I alluded to that earlier in this video. Um, I did use a different speaker. The bottom cab is an Eminence Legend, and those run about 100 bucks. This one only runs about $32.99, I think, on Amazon. It had similar frequency uh, response on it. I think the Legend is 40 hertz to 2 kilohertz, and this one is 45 hertz to 7.5 kilohertz. So a little more top end bite on this one, which is good. A lot of you guys mentioned in my last video that you thought that my cab needed a tweeter. And I respectfully disagree. Uh, but this one definitely takes it to the next level. I mean, if I turn up the highs. Got way more treble in there that I even want. So I actually, I roll them back quite a bit. Maybe not quite that much. That sounds perfect to me. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit and show you how these UV meters work. All right, so like I mentioned earlier in my video, I set up this UV meter here right here to monitor my input level. So you can see I'm on standby, but that, that needle's bouncing around. And then this one is my output. I wired that to the DI output. That way it didn't affect my speaker outputs at all. And so you can see nothing, I kick it on and it comes up. I've got the volume relatively low right now, so it's kind of barely bouncing around. But if I were to crank the gain on that side, you can see it hits red right when this amp starts to overdrive. So it is a very useful meter. I mean, you could probably hear with your ears whether you're overdriving or not, but maybe perhaps if you're playing with a full band and you, you're having trouble hearing yourself over the drummer or whatever, then this is a good indication if you're pushing your amp too hard or not. So. Pretty cool. For $25, I think it adds a ton of value to this amp. Another thing that I want to point out to you guys, I alluded to it last week when I was building my bass cab, but these amp corners are awesome. And sort of a happy coincidence, I didn't mean to do this, but my amp head turned out to be the exact same dimensions as my speaker cab. So I ended up using the rear amp corners of this speaker cab to put on the front here. That way, when I set this down, 
it just beautifully locks into place and doesn't move around. So same with this cab sitting on top of the other one. That's just a really cool feature. I think I'm gonna be using these and they're really cheap. You know, you get all eight corners for like four or $5, as cheap as any other amp corners. But I think I'm gonna be using these as well as that UV meter kit on just about every amp that I build from here on out because it just fits together so beautifully and perfect. Of course, now that I know that my head is the same dimension as my cab, I'm gonna go ahead and order some more of these corners. That way I can do all eight corners on the head as well as all eight corners on the cab. Now, one thing that I simultaneously love and hate about KLD amp kits is that they model them after big name brands, but they don't make them exactly the same. So they're not true clones, okay? The circuitry is kind of based on a similar idea, but it's not a true clone. There's a lot different about this. For example, uh, an Ampeg Portaflex uses six V6 tubes. And as I mentioned earlier, this one came set up for six L6 tubes. Now I love the sound of these six L6s, so I'm not swapping them out. But like I said, a cool thing about KLD amp kits is that you can kind of make something that doesn't already exist in the market. So for example, uh, this thing uses six L6 tubes, but there is a trim pot underneath where you can actually adjust the bias for different tubes. So you could run 6v6, you could run EL34s uh, or 6L6 tubes. That way you can kind of tweak it to your liking, which I think is super cool. So while this is, you know, an Ampeg clone, it really is kind of its own breed, which is very cool. It looks like nothing on the market. It sounds, it honestly sounds like an Ampeg, but not exactly with the 6L6 tubes. So I think that's super cool. Now my one bit of criticism, I think for this amp is that when you're just using a single eight ohm cab, it's not quite enough to keep up with a full band, okay? I tried to play with a full band with this thing with an eight ohm 15 inch speaker cab and just right when it started getting to the volume where I could barely hear myself over the drummer is when it started to overdrive. And then cranking the volume more, it just got more and more saturated. So it didn't cut through the mix any better. It's one of the reasons why I kind of rushed to build a second eight ohm cab for this thing so that I could see if running two eight ohm cabs in parallel for four ohms, if it would be enough power to keep up with the full band. And it's definitely better. I mean, it is a lot louder with two cabs than it is with one. Um, is it enough to keep up with a full band and be heard? in a venue, uh, I don't know, but it would be enough for you at least to hear yourself on stage. So what I would say with 25 watts, it's great for bedroom practice. It's excellent for studio recording, which by the way, if you want to hear more sound samples of this, check out my video last week because the amp sounds exactly the same as it did last week. That's why I'm not recording more sound samples. As far as live performance, it really just makes a good stage monitor for you to hear yourself. I'm not sure that people out way out in the audience would be able to hear you. So, I would love to see KLD come up with a 50 watt version of this available because that would get us to the next level where you could actually use it for live performance as well. Of course, these days, I mean, how many gigs do you actually need a stage amp to be your main volume if you're not going through like a PA or something? So uh, that's a whole nother discussion. But overall, I think my little mini stack is Perfect. I don't think I'm gonna sell this one. I think I'm gonna keep this set up for myself. I can't think of any way to make it better other than just a smidge more power. So KLD, if you develop a 50 watt version, I'm happy to review it and maybe it'll replace this one. We'll see. Anyway, I got more DIY guitar and bass content coming for you. For example, check out this new DIY bass kit I got from the Fretwire. Now I told you guys that I was done building kits because they don't offer enough customization, but obviously this one offers a little bit more than most. And if you're wondering what design I'm gonna do, I'll give you a quick hint. Do you see it now? <laughs> Make sure you're subscribed and click that bell notification so you don't miss next week's video. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you next week.